All right, so we're back with our other tutorial, our last tutorial for the day, on how to do some stuff with 3D and with basically changing all your materials around, making this thing look like the pictures we have on the website, kind of like this. So you get it, and you can do a ray trace, you can get all this stuff all spruced up, and even get backdrops. All right, so let's get started here. First thing you're going to want to do is, we've already done this plan, as we did in the last tutorial. Most of the stuff we don't have to change, but a lot of this stuff is all defaults that don't look all that great. So for example, you got this subway tile on the back, and you got a real boring uh, countertop. So let's go to I'm going to show you guys how to change all of that. Go over to your architectural, or all of your, uh, um, what is it, all of your catalogs here. And what we're going to do is we are going to find a manufacturer catalog and I downloaded a lot of them because I had a lot of fun with this and I think I've spent days on just playing around with changing different settings and whatnot. I mean you have everything from Caesar Stone to Cambria. Cambria? Cambria? Yeah they have a ton of it. If you look at all these different ones I don't like how they put all of theirs into the same directory. It makes it so that you know it's hard to figure out what to use there. But say you like that one for example. I'm just randomly picking one. Let's say you like this one right here, lots of different textures and stuff on it. You just click and spray paint. Boom. Technically, you could change uh, the countertop or the cabinets too with this stuff, but obviously, we can't make a door out of granite. So I guess we're not really custom after all. Um, yeah, it's just not what we do. Uh, so anyway, go and figure out what's, what color you like. This one's like a real slab piece. That kind of looks fake though. For this one, I'm just going to, let's just use some random piece like this. Fun, huh? So anyway, knock yourself out. Do whatever you want to do there. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go down to the flooring now. Uh, here's Carlisle wood, wide, wide wood plank floor. Hmm. So you can play around with this for days. I mean, I was, I'd was i look through here and just be like, okay, let's go look at something urban. Maybe this guy right here. I think that's the one I had on there before, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't really matter, and you can do this and just kind of figure out what you want. But the cool thing I thought is if you were actually doing your own design and you found, like, you know, say the Anders, what is it, uh, Armstrong flooring, and you were going to get some sort of a wide plank, you know, floor, and you just put it in there, you know, you got the actual colors here. You can actually change all that around. So, again, I, I could do this all day. I'm just going to leave it on one like this, or maybe something a little bit more grayish, maybe some of the white. I, I don't know. It just You could do this. It's, it's just so much fun. Real dark. Okay. All right, so that's kind of how you do all this stuff. Now, Backsplash, let's go to Doll Tile. They had some nice-looking uh, pieces in there. Somebody put together a lot of different stuff. So doll Tile. Is it Doll Tile or Dut? Dull the tile? No, I don't know. All right, so mosaic. Go to mosaics and kind of figure out which one you want to do. Let's just go with something like this. Notice you can do this on the backsplash. Pretty easy. Just got to hit all the places that you put in before. I don't really like that one. Let's go with something just a little bit different. Maybe this guy. Yeah. This is pretty ugly. I'm just choosing these at random, but um, this is going to be the ugliest thing. But it'll look like somebody made a huge mistake when they get in here. Let's go with this one. Ugh. Again, you can kind of see how you can work through here and just find out what you want to do. Let's make an ugly kitchen. There we go. So that's what you do there. Uh, actually, this is better. Let's just go with that one. I like it. And then I just, I don't know, I can't stand that floor. So that's what you do. Uh, other than that, as far as changing the color of your cabinets, you can go back to our catalog. Now, notice on Barker Modern, you have all the different colors of our doors and cabinets. All of them are right here. You got everything from metallic. Uh, you could do, say, brushed, metallic brushed. I put all these textures in there, and that's pretty close to what it is. I actually took that from our website. So that's, you know, it's pretty easy. So you go to valley, you can do, let's say you want to do this cabinet in valley, horizontal grain, you can change it to vertical grain. And again, when you go to order these on our website, you simply click on this thing, and then whenever you put in each cabinet, for example, like this is a wall cabinet, two-door wall cabinet, you can change that grain direction to be horizontal or vertical. So it matches up with, with your plan. So just make sure you kind of have a good idea uh, of what you're doing right there. So let's just do carbone, because I haven't done that one yet. So let's go carbone. 
boom, 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 boom. And if you make a mistake, you can always go back and do, you can always go back and change it. You see here, I'm just going through and I'm just spray painting uh, essentially everything that needs to be done. All right, I think I got pretty much all of them, but we're going to want to do vertical grain again on the moldings because that's just the way it works. And then I'm going to do horizontal grain on those guys. And get it? Yeah, I got it. Boom. Done. So there we go. One more. I like it to be just right. Cool. Oh, we got to get rid of that floor. I'm sorry if this is taking a little bit longer, but let's get rid of that floor. That is just that's just ugly. Yeah, that's fine. That's better. Ugh, that's gonna be a panic attack. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I missed one right there. So again, if you miss them, just go back through and you can go to Barker Modern, Textured, Carbone, Horizontal Grain, all right there. And that didn't really work. You need to go vertical grain on the moldings for some reason. There we go. That's not bad, not bad. Oof, Control Z, Control Z. If you get messed up like that, it's a lot easier to just push Control Z than trying to find their original. All right, so that's it right there. So now we got our lighting. We did that in our last tutorial. Make sure you got your lighting. Make sure you got your, your textures all where you want them. All right, now let's go through, and I'm going to show you how to do a backdrop. Go back to our plan view here, and let's take this camera, and let's delete it. Let, oh. All right. And what we're going to do is go back up through here, and we're going to take a full camera, or Shift-J, I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop. I kind of want to look at the, the kitchen this way. Not too bad, not too bad. I'm going to move it up back a little bit. I know I made an error right there. There you go. But not too bad. Now, it doesn't have all the lighting and stuff like that done, but that's kind of how you get this thing ready to go. Now, let's see here if I can get this. Okay, so to do another backdrop, what you're going to want to do is come up here and go to any of these catalogs. Most likely you want to do a backdrops or the bonus catalogs. They had some good ones there, uh, the backdrop bonus catalog. So go to spherical and panoramic. Double click on that. And you got a whole bunch of different ones. You could do something from, you know, this grand fog over forest panoramic. Just drag it and then click on the window or outside and it'll change it for you, or as it should. So there you go, look, see, oh, this kitchen's floating in the middle of, it looks like, like the hills of Oregon. So yeah, you can kind of see where it is. Now you can actually kind of move it around a little bit, maybe, let's put it right there, adjust where you want your background to be, so you got a nice little view. That looks pretty good to me. Nice. I'd love to have that view. All right, let's go out through here, and I am going to expand these walls out so I, ca I can get a better picture. You might be saying, why do you want to do that? But I'll show you, because if you don't expand those views out, now you don't have that, you know, that abyss, you know, going out through there. So that's what we're going to do there. Now, the last thing you want to do here is going to be to adjust all the other little settings. And you can spend a million years doing that, okay? So let's just go through here. You can say, I'm going to toggle reflections. That's fine. Toggle shadows. That's good. Turn your shadows off. Watch, no, watch the shadows next to the cabinet. They're off. You know, it's more realistic if you have the shadows, you know, on there. So let's turn the shadows back on. And then all these other ones. Just keep these three checked. And, uh, yeah, we're good to go. So next thing we want to do here is go to a little camera thing. It says Ray Trace or J. Okay, you're going to click that once, and you're going to launch the assistant. Now make sure you select indoor. They have outdoor and they have indoor. So the outdoor is going to give you different sun and different effects like that. I haven't really spent too much time doing that, um, but you know you can kind of get the idea. So we're going to go through here. Just leave these things standard. I like to keep all these things checked. Say no focal blur, that's standard, and then indoor high quality six. And you can experiment around with these as much as you want. Say finish, and then just say ray trace. Okay, now give it a second, and I'm going to pause this while it renders. It's going to take up to five to ten minutes to render these pictures. 
and we're three and a half minutes into it. So you can kind of see how everything kind of works out here. Uh, the As it keeps drawing, notice we keep drawing, it's going over more and more passes. Uh, it can make it look more and more realistic. So the longer you let this thing sit, the more realistic it'll look. And notice that the shininess and, you know, like the, I guess the glossiness um, of everything is going to be done. You can see the reflection on here. You can see the texture and how it's not very uh, reflective uh, on this. I can see an error I made right here. <laughs> so let's try another view real quick. Uh, what I went through, I went and fixed the error. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to stop the ray trace. There's a little stop button right there. So let's stop that. Otherwise, it eat up. It will eat up all of your system resources. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit right here because I think this is a nice view. And I fixed those little issues right there. That's pretty sweet, actually. Kind of like that countertop. My wife would say it's too busy. So let's just get a picture like this. It looks kind of cool, right? Go back up here and let's go back to ray trace. Now you can redo the exact same ray trace, or you can even adjust all your lighting. So there's lots of different things you can do. You can spend hours and hours just having fun with the 3D uh, program here. Let's go back to ray trace. We did high quality six. That was one from last time. That one worked out pretty well. And let's do another ray trace. All right, so here we are, about two minutes and 30 seconds into it. Again, it's still doing more passes and whatnot, but you know, from afar, that looks pretty good. Not too bad. Now, now you could always work around with the lighting a little bit. Uh, you could do up, up here, you can do like wall, um, what is it like, uh, those vinyl letters and whatnot. I mean, they had so many of these catalogs in here. It's, it's just not, it's, you could spend days doing this stuff, so. Anyway, that's how you get a basic 3D drawing together. If you're advanced DIY, or if you're a contractor, or if you're a designer, uh, essentially you're going to be using this a lot. You're going to be putting this stuff together, showing your clients, and it really does impress them. I mean, look at this. Look at the wolf. You can see their wolf, their logo. It even says what 1027. You know, you got the red knobs on there. I mean, that's just that's sweet. That is, you know, that's that's what your clients need, or you, you know, putting this thing together. Go show your significant other, your husband or your wife. Uh, to, you know, hey, look, look what I put together. And all this stuff's already in the catalog. So kind of to summarize what we've done in the last few tutorials is we've gone from, you know, a blank slate to a professional kitchen cabinet design, um, as you've seen here. Now, there's always other options that you might come up with that you say, hey, Chad, I really need to get something, uh, you know, like how do you put a, you know, massive sink, this 36-inch wide sink cabinet, it uh, doesn't really work for me. I'm getting like a massive, you know, I'm, I'm super rich and I'm going to put a 48-inch wide sink in there. You know, I mean, great, good for you. Or, you know, whatever it has to be. So those are questions, you know, if you have specific design questions, send them over. Uh, I can usually put, usually put a tutorial together for you uh, in a picture format. And then hopefully, uh, if everybody likes it, one thing I think after doing these tutorials is seeing that if you have, say, wall appliances and whatnot, I can put a cabinet together with the actual piece in there, as long as they have it in the catalog, of course. I won't be able to do every single one of them. But that's kind of nice because then you can just pull it right out of the catalog, toss it into your plan, and you're good to go. You know, you can order that size and everything like that, and it's all good. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the tutorial here. I will be doing more. This was just the first series to kind of show you how to do this. The next tutorial we're going to do is not going to be a simple kitchen. It's going to be an advanced kitchen layout. That's where we're going to step up these corners. We're going to bring them down. We're going to put some open floating shelves in there, and we're going to make the thing just look pristine. All right. Thanks again. Have a great day.